bloodstone as powerful as it is sinister. A moment of your time, if it pleases you. I have been pondering and brooding, deliberating and deducting, and I have come to the conclusion that I may well know who our true enemy is. Now, our foe is the Void, of course, the usurper of time and space. But more dangerous even than the great and all-consuming nothing, are those who are bent on helping it here, or bent on helping it on Rivalon. I think he still lives. The one that set it all in motion. The one you met here in the House of the Guardians. Yes, him. It. The one who does not look quite like he used to. The one that whispered deceit and desire into Astarte's ears. He is friend to the Void, and he seeks to give it dominion once and for all. That is who I think he is. As a writer, I'm going to have to disagree with you there, but even then, please don't be fooled, for he does much more than wag his tongue. What we see here, in what was once your house, is most certainly real. But the demon, Astarte, they are, so I believe, mere manifestations of their true selves. Oh, he dwells somewhere. He must. It is a creature of blood and bloodlust, of lies and stratagems. All this time he has been plotting, of that I assure you. If our enemy has a heart, he is the one that makes it beat. That is my theory. Plot as much as it wants. We won't fall for its tricks. We shouldn't get overconfident, though. There's more to that thing than meets the eye. I wonder who awaits you in the next chamber. I wonder what they'll see. Impressive. A smithy and an armory. Ah, how good of you to drop by. She told me you had grown, you know. That simpleton of a girl. She felt the need to inform me of the fact, with that pathetic tinge of pride in her voice. As if I did not know. As if I haven't been watching you. Like a vulture, a dying. Beast. I could have plucked out those dewy eyes of hers and thrown them into a frying pan like eggs. Have you ever seen Sunny Side Up staring back at you? I have. But enough of this small talk. Yes, I have been watching you, and my amusement has turned into aggravation. Yet still, I yearn, yearn for the moment you finally become powerful enough to realize the true depths of your failures. When you do, I'll be there, drawing circles in the skies, watching, waiting, ready to pounce. We must be getting on his nerves. Excellent. I'll never look at a fried egg in the same way ever again, though. You called to Albra.
One man's trash is another man's trash. One man's trash is another man's trash. Oh, hum. I do prefer an audience when I give one of my history lessons. My friends, I see you found another star stone. Jolly good of you. But I haven't been exactly idle either, for I think I may have nearly figured out why Sauce became so terribly tainted. If Astarte is the goddess of the Sauce, and the void was contained in her very garden, might it stand to reason that it was, in fact, the Void who turned Source into such a dark and terrible power? But the tapestry has been rewoven. Time has been restored. I must speculate no more, and instead we must see what new shred of our tale you've uncovered. With the Guardians distracted, Astarte lifted the lid of the God Box. What she saw... was nothingness. Astarte had called forth the Void Dragon, whose sole purpose was to undo all creation. Caught off guard and terrified, the Guardian's sworn protectors fled. But Astarte stood firm. She grabbed hold of the dragon and hurled it and herself into the reaches of the void. Here she battled the dragon for all eternity. For his deception, the trife was cast out of the first creation. He fell to wriggle on a monstrous creature unworthy of the realm of the gods. Since that terrible day, Source has been tainted by the presence of the void. A once beautiful power has become corrupted, and those attempting to wield it often go mad in the process. We may have been tricked into allowing Astarte to open the God Box, but we fled when faced with the Void once more. Well, aren't you going to leap through? Who knows what wonder awaits you? To think that all this chaos was unleashed by our foolishness! There's a seafaring atmosphere about this place. And seafaring leads to the exotic, to trading. We may be in this. Guardians. Oh, Guardians, I need you. Heed my plea in these void-filled hours. The dragon is overpowering me. Our enemies are battering the fragile gates of time. The skies are darkening. And the stars are being extinguished. You have to reach me. Star stones will pave the way. Find them, use them, empower them. And hurry, please make haste. Hang out. 
Only Starstone can stay the Maelstrom now. Alas, that damnable stuff is hidden better than a leprechaun's pot of gold. Ah, fancy finding you here. It's such a very small series of worlds after all. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I'm just tidying up a bit, ensuring that all's running smoothly. Every gear well oiled, every cog in its place. Nothing special. Well, why not? It's an interesting sort of place, isn't it? And speaking of interesting sorts of places, you must have seen some fantastic things on your journey so far. The mysterious stranger gives you a hard look, as though trying to discern something deep within your eyes. After a moment or two, he appears suddenly satisfied and slowly blinks. Kay! Welcome, step right up. Browse these fine goods from far-flung fairy worlds and local slums the same. Take your time or don't. Time is meaningless after all. an eternity ago or was it a thousand years from now oh. i was a simple market peddler on the cobbled streets of alaroth it was master six sex himself who passed one long or possibly very short summer by teaching me both the art and science of riff hopping and i've been trooping to and fro across space and time ever since Today's special anti-purgation war machine parts.
say, good customer? on the shelter plane. Uh, it shall be my pleasure. You were deceived, yes. You fled, yes. But look at you now, Source Hunter. You are returned, nearly at least, to your former glory, your former duty. Tirelessly do you work against the Void's encroachment, and for this we can only be grateful, no matter what the past has held. Have it dropped? Most me. certainly! You didn't? I can't think of a better place for their sort to dock and deal than this nexus of space and time. It's the perfect location for it. Folks like them have seen worlds I only know from picture books. The exotica they bring with them. Blimey, I'm tempted to go on a shopping spree myself. Magnificent, isn't it? The anvil of creation, as Lady Time calls it. Don't be too intimidated by the fact that the Divines themselves use this mighty forge. Put it to good use, and maybe you'll craft weaponry and armors that will save those same divines from the void. It's got all kinds of wonders stuck Good inside. to see you on the shelter plane. A home away from home, is it not? Here Wargraf gives a curt, disgruntled nod and does a funny dance while holding his hands to his head like floppy ears. You assume he's off to stay with zigzags on the shelter plane, or that he's having a stroke. I am on the trail, Source Hunter. Bear Daughter seems about to leap up and grasp you in her arms, but thinks better of it and silently stands at attention. I am on the trail, Source Hunter. <laughs> 